Hey, this is a quick video to go over uh, a project that I worked on over the past couple years, I think. It took a while to get to. It sat in my garage for a long time. But you can see uh, the driver here having a great time controlling this cat um, riding toy, but using a uh, an Atari joystick instead of the controls that it came with. So um, I think, you know, a year before we had found this fire engine in the neighborhood and it was just on the side of the road and it really just needed a battery. And it was kind of fun to, to hack this thing and, and uh, tweak it so that it had two batteries and a, a voltage display and some other things. So when I found this Caterpillar, I was like, oh, I can do some more fun stuff with this. So the main thing was uh, it, it worked, it just needed a battery. And it really kind of operates like a real tractor. So for a two-year-old at the time, it was kind of hard to drive because you had to, um, you know, if you wanted to go forward, you push both sticks forward. If you wanted to go left, you uh, basically, you know, if you want to spin in place, you would push one forward and one backward. Um, so they kind of two controls work together, but independently like a real, like a real tractor would. So I thought, you know, it could make that easier by just having um, a joystick instead. So um, what I started doing was just looking at how this thing was wired and I just kind of followed the wires and tried to make this scribbly uh, schematic version of what I thought it was doing. And then I came up with this more, uh, this cleaner version of the way it was wired. And it's not a real schematic, but it kind of gave me a sense of like what I was looking at. And you can see the two motors on the left and basically there was a pedal. So in addition to the, the hand controls, there was a pedal too. So um, Basically, you had to push the pedal and use those two controllers. So you can see the pedal is a double pull, double throw switch in the middle there. And then all over to the right, you have two more double pull, double throw switches for each of the two sticks. So a uh, double pull, double throw switch allows a motor, a DC motor to go forward or backwards. So you can see in the upper uh, diagram here, the way the voltage kind of goes when the switch is in one position allows uh, positive to go to the plus side of the motor and, and negative to go to the negative side of the motor. But then uh, if you flip the switch the other way, it essentially uh, reverses those so that positive goes to the negative part of the motor and, and the other way. And that's how DC motors work is you just kind of swap the wires and it goes backwards. And then of course that other switch in the middle was to turn it on and off. So just a double pull, double throw switch doesn't uh, it, it allows you to switch forward and backward, but it doesn't allow the motor to stop. It's always going forward or backward, and so you need another switch separately. So my thinking was uh, I would replace all of these switches with relays instead, and um, I, I I could probably get some double pull, double throw uh, relays, but then and I was thinking I would make my own circuit board that had the relays on it, but then I remembered I have this uh, cheap relay board from Amazon is kind of like amazing how cheap it is because I feel like the relays cost more than the whole board itself uh, if you buy them separately and basically these are all single pole single throw relays so it's not exactly what I needed but I did remember that you can uh, essentially wire up a, a pair of single pole single throw relays to act like a double pole double throw relay so here you can see the my proposal for how I would use the eight single throw single throw single pull single throw relays to function like four kind of logical uh, double pull double throw relays. So there's probably another way to do this too, but this is the solution I came up with. And you can see each of the relays in this diagram is are, are numbered. So one two three four five six seven eight, and then um, then they go to the motors and some some fuses. And so the idea is that uh, a microcontroller would talk to this relay board and operate this the relays in different combinations and be able to turn the the vehicle on off forward backward you know spinning or kind of forward and left or spinning left all of the different uh, possibilities so i uh just kind of i put the numbers on the relay so i they matched my uh diagram and then i just started wiring it up and connected it to an a really old uh, Arduino board that I had hanging around. And then you can see here, this is actually how you would make it work. So if you wanted to go forward, you would turn on relays one, three, five, and seven. If you wanted to uh, go, you know, if you want to spin left, uh, as in the left side goes forward and the, or sorry, the left side goes backward and the right side goes forward, um, you would turn on relays two, four, 
uh, five and seven. So I wrote the code so that it would uh, do each of those things um, in turn. And then I just kind of tried it out. So here it is with me and our, uh, our old dog, the best dog ever. Rest in peace, Ronan. Uh, so we had another dog at the time that I made this. And um, so he was out there and watched this kind of autonomous robot do its thing while I had the just the, the Arduino and the relay board just resting on top. And you can see it, it worked, but it, you know, I, I had some of the, um, the directions or the, the relay numbers wrong, but otherwise it worked. So from there, I went ahead and made a circuit board mainly so that I could not have wires stuck in an Arduino and instead have a, a good way to deal with the wiring. And so I had all these uh, Ethernet jacks hanging around and I thought I'll make a little circuit board that has Ethernet jacks on it and, um, and use that for all the wiring. It's not Ethernet at all. It just uses Ethernet cables. And of course, I had to put a uh, silk screen of a tractor on the bottom with mounting holes that match the wheels. The other part of it was that I wanted the I wanted an Atari joystick to uh, run this thing. So on the right there, you can see this board that I made that um, allows that Ethernet cable to connect to an, an Atari joystick, basically. And then um, on the other side, you can see it says RJ45 to DB9 or 8. There's eight wires in an Ethernet cable, but there are nine pins in an, in an Atari cable, but they're not all necessary. So uh, here it is just sort of resting on the, on the um, tractor, and I'll just cut to the video that I made at the time explaining where I was in the process. The project was, can I just kind of rip out everything and rewire it uh, to instead use an Atari joystick. So either we could walk behind this thing or the person sitting in there could, could do it. So the controls used to be here. I remember, I mean, it's two years ago that I did a lot of this now, but uh, just finished it this week. Uh, remember, I've 3D printed a little blank here where the controls used to be. Again, they were too complicated. It was like, it was like driving a real tractor. You know, you had to do, use the left and right um, things and kind of go forward on both or uh, forward or backward on, on one or the other. Um, obviously this is more intuitive. So a uh, few things. I made a little uh, breakout board that would um, allow us to connect a, an Atari DB9 plug into uh, an RJ45 Ethernet jack. And this is the uh, Ethernet jack coming from, from the joystick. This is a board that I made because this smaller board is uh, kind of a failed project. I, I made a mistake in the design and so I have a few of these boards hanging around. So I made kind of like a daughter board for it or motherboard for it um, that allows me to uh, just use it as, you know, kind of any old microcontroller like an Arduino, but having um, RJ45 jacks to make wiring things easier. So the other two, the red Ethernet cables, go to this $12 relay board, which controls, uh, use all eight of the relays to control the two motors in this thing. Um, they either go forward or backward and you know you can make the thing spin or you can make it sort of go left or right depending on the combination of the motors um this is a replacement battery the reason why i got this was for for free was the same reason most of them are free because the battery was dead and um i did notice you know there's a new fuse in here but there was a fuse in here that was like one that i had never encountered before it glows when it's blown so for a long time i couldn't figure out what was wrong because there was a glowing fuse in there i thought that was a good sign but it was actually a bad one um, that's about it. I just now have to just make all of this fit under the seat. Um, I'm about to program this hopefully for the last time. I just had forward and reverse uh, backwards. It's a little scary to try and record uh, with the laptop up here just in case something goes wrong. So I'll just pause the recording and then uh, when I'm finished programming, we'll give it a test run and hopefully this will be the first successful run of this thing. So here we go. I just reprogrammed it. No problems. It didn't take off on me like it did in the living room. Uh, and let's see if I push it forward, it goes forward. It goes back, it goes back. You see all the LEDs on the relays going. This is uh, pivot left. Uh oh, is that right? Nope, it's backwards. <laughs> so pivot right. That's kind of uh, forward and left. So it uses uh, all eight eight directions of the of the controller. So that's working. Yeah, I think everything's working except for the pivoting. So we'll fix that. But it is rideable, I think. I go backward. And that's 
it. Uh, this thing's been sitting around for years at this point, but this week I was like, okay, I need to get it out of the garage. So this is what it looks like um, in total. And uh, that's it, just need to patch it all up. And uh, well, there's also an LED here, my opportunity to use this 10 millimeter LED that I've had hanging around probably for over a dozen years. And um, I'll make this blink when, when this thing is on. And that way we don't um, forget to turn it off because the microcontroller and the relay board will always be consuming some tiny amount of power. So the last thing to do is I'm gonna put a switch up here that basically powers it off and it'll literally be like a battery cutoff. So that's it. <laughs>